Dude, you, three reps with a side bend, tear, tear fells popped off. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're starting a bit of a new series called Track Chat um, with myself and John. Um, it's going to be a very informal sort of way to describe some exercises that we use in the gym um, to help uh, improve performance in the gym as well, um, specifically for powerlifting. Um, what are we talking about today, John? So so today we're going to be talking about core training and powerlifting. What is it? What does it look like? When should we do it? How often? And basically what exercises we've used in the past and basically our philosophy around core training and powerlifting as well. So what are your thoughts around core training and powerlifting, Josh? I don't see a massive, I guess, uh, improvement out of performance in terms of specifically isolated core training. Um, there is a fair bit of core training going on at the moment in terms of social media, um, big names in social media talk about it at the moment. Um, I don't find it super useful for performance, but um, I think there are ways to either restore range of motion if we need to, um, specifically with rehab, like what, what we um, more so do in our jobs here. Um, but the other thing is just to get a bit more movement options for, um, you know, around the ribs as well can be very useful. Yeah, 100%. So I've always seen the core as a muscle, just like anything else that we want to grow and hypertrophy and get stronger. However, I've never used it in the context of trying to improve the performance of a single lift. Like Josh was saying, I think there's a lot of nice ways that we can uh, kind of implement our core training to help try and restore range of motion okay and get some motion back into some of our joints namely like our back our ribs our hips that can then probably improve performance but in terms of actually like i guess stereotypical um things like uh, bracing and lift and things like that i've never sort of viewed um the core to kind of help too much in things like the squat the bench and the deadlift where there's a lot of actual movement around the spine and not a lot of actual sort of like um you know concrete bracing of the core throughout the whole lift so I don't find um, trying to use core training to try to I guess like improve bracing or stability as, as a major contributor to improving performance. Agreed yeah I mean maybe today we can go through I think the two that we might go through today is something that will restore someone's ability to flex the lumbar because a lot of powerlifters kind of get stuck in this um, lumbar extended position which is very useful for performance but sometimes it can create problems down the road when someone gets stuck in that sort of that duck butt anteriorly pelvic tilted position. Um, so we can go through something that helps flexes lumbar a little bit and also sort of improves a little bit more like lateral flexion and extension. So opening up each side of the ribs. So we'll go through those two now. Yeah, I think as well, like with, with the core training, there was a big period of time where people were doing things like, like planks and dead bugs and trying to train like sort of the, the intra-abdominal wall, uh, the TA for example. Um, but I think today what we're going to more so cover is actually like training things like the obliques and like the six pack muscles, for example, yep. Um, yep. And, and show you something a little bit different, something that's a little bit more dynamic in nature. Yep. Okay, we see probably quite a few extension based injuries in powerlifting, I guess, just due to the nature of like trying to drive so much extension during exercises like the bench press. Um, this will be a really nice way just to show you the other direction and get like things like the lower back and the shoulders feeling much better. Yep, sweet. First one we're gonna try show you here is essentially what we call a gut hammer curl. This is gonna help restore a little bit of lumbar flexion um, and just get the sort of the ab or the anterior ab wall uh, muscles trained uh, in a specific position. So John's gonna essentially grab onto a pole or a, or a rack or whatever he feels like he needs to use. Um, essentially the, e the harder version of this is to keeping his knees straight so the lever is longer and then just thinking about bringing his legs up towards the pole using his abs to sort of crunch him up and sort of flatten out his low back as he comes down and then reverses that on the way down. Something like a couple sets of, of 10 to 12 reps um, is plenty here, um, just to get the abs going. Um, to make this a little bit easier, what John can do with this next um, rep is just bend his knees, levers a little bit shorter here, and then just sort of same sort of thing. He's thinking about flattening his low back, bring his knees as far as he can towards that pole. Very useful for people that feel like they get stuck in that anteriorly pelvic position um, or they're stuck in a lot of lumbar extension. Great. Cool. All right, so a nice way to train basically the obliques or get some lateral flexion into the spine, which is something we don't really get exposed to a lot of in powerlifting, just due to the nature of it being a very uh, backwards and forwards sport. 
okay, is we can train uh, basically our side bridge positions, but not in an isometric uh, fashion, more so dynamically where we're gonna actually be going through repetitions of side bending, trying to open up the top half, okay, of the ribs here and close off the bottom down there. So what Josh is gonna do is he's gonna bend his knees to 90 degrees, have his hips nice and straight, hand on the back of his head just to open up this side of the body. And he's gonna try and lift his hips up as high as he can to the roof, okay? This will force air into this side of the rib cage, okay? And contract his obliques down below. And this is gonna get some movement and some flexion laterally into his spine. So this is a really nice way that we can train our abs, okay? And also restore range of motion through our lower back and open up our rib cage. Okay, another way that we can train the abs and more specifically the obliques and the QL, okay, is using a 45 degree back extension and doing a side bend over the top. So what Josh is gonna do, he's gonna set up with a split stance. His front leg, okay, is gonna be forward. His outside leg is gonna be back. Essentially what he's gonna do is he's gonna hinge laterally over the bench. Okay, you should feel a stretch through here, okay, through his QL and his obliques. And then he's gonna come up and contract those muscles really, really hard and try and shorten that side. So on the way down, you'll get this expansion or this opening up of the lower back and the ribs. And on the way up, you'll get this shortening and this closing off. So this is a really nice way that we can restore our mobility through our back and strengthen our core a bit more dynamically, okay? So there's three really good movements that you can do to train core to help improve, okay? Different things within your powerlifting, such as your range of motion, okay? And the strength of your back. Okay, so what we went through was basically using our six pack to flex our spine, okay, with the gar hammer raise, the side bends to train our obliques, and then also, okay, the lateral side bends on the 45 degree back extension to train predominantly our QL muscles. This is a really nice way to get our back stronger, more mobile, as well as helping restore some range of motion for our ribs, which could also help make your shoulders feel good when going through things like getting under the bar or bench pressing as well. So basically summarize, we don't necessarily look to train abs to try and, I guess, improve performance of the big three lifts, but basically look at training our abs in ways that we don't get a lot of exposure to during those three big lifts, okay, which can help improve range of motion, our movement variability, and therefore if we can move better, our performance is going to increase, okay. Josh, anything to add? Not really. Just if you have any questions or comments, leave a, any questions um, for the video, just leave a comment. We'll try and get back to you or send us a DM on Instagram. Thanks.